Hi everyone and welcome back to Prefusion. I'm Anish and today we'll start the lecture nine of uh, this rectifiers chapter of this AC to DC converters. So we have learned about a lot of converters. We have so even solved questions, very very good questions in the previous lecture. If you like skip the previous lecture like of questions solving, you must uh, go through that lecture again. And like if you weren't able to solve, just try to analyze which part of concept you aren't able to solve. You can always ask me in the doubt group if you have any doubt in any particular uh, timestamp right you can always ask in the doubt group i will try to uh, explain to you okay so yeah let's start today's lecture today's lecture we'll study about full wave rectifiers with free wheeling doubt so finally the free wheeling doubt for full wave rectifiers will be introduced up until now we haven't introduced it and full wave full wave semi converters also will study after this and then we'll do questions on uh, full wave rectifiers with free, free, free wheeling doubts and uh, full wave rectifiers with semi converters so uh, like unknowingly we have solved few questions of full wave uh, rectifiers with semi converters like in the previous lecture uh, so like the things that we learn will be just a a revision kind of thing for you so it will be easier much easier for you so don't worry so just uh, listen to me carefully whatever i am explaining and you will be able to understand everything so first of all we will talk about full wave rectifier with free wheeling doubt so what is a free wheeling doubt it will be a anti parallel doubt that will be connected across the load basically so why is it useful because if i connect this doubt right then the current can never flow from load to source current like um no sorry i f framed it or like framed the statement wrong current like power can never flow from load to source power will only flow from source to load and then it will discharge through this doubt right so it will only dissipate through the load itself that power so that we learned in the half wave rectifiers case and obviously our assumption will be we will do this for the continuous conduction that means what that means my inductor is very large okay inductor is very large so those are those are the things that we need to assume so obviously we will analyze so just in short i will tell you so let's say this uh, converter has some alpha right this uh, trigger angle alpha so but my uh, assumption is continuous conduction then obviously there is an inductor which will keep scrs on which will keep scrs on so what will happen is before this alpha is triggered so this this t1 and t2 are in forward blocking mode so they will be in forward blocking mode so they will not turn on and this t4 and t3 are in reverse blocking mode and then how will the current flow current will flow through this diode whenever all the four diodes are off so previously what we are uh, like in in case of uh, pure resistive load, load right what we are uh, like doing is that from zero to alpha everything was off so output voltage was simply zero or if you would have uh, remembered the rle load case right rle load case that everything was when everything was off all the four uh, scrs were off the output voltage was equals to e okay then it suddenly jumped off as soon as this triggered to vs then again it continues up until pi minus theta and it went it copied that it kept this t1 and t2 on and then again suddenly it went to e but here what will happen is as soon as it goes around zero right what will happen this t1 and t2 will be uh, off and the load right the load like the inductance will actually turn this diode on why will it turn this diode on because uh, it is more convenient for it because through this diode less amount of energy will be lost if i would have turned on this uh, if i the current would have flown through this like if i would have kept this t2 and t1 on right then current has to flow through this then my inductor has to deliver power to the source as well but if this free wheeling diode is on right so i am totally disconnected okay i'm totally disconnected from the circuit and i'm discharging only through this part so i, I am already only providing current uh, to uh, uh, i'm already providing power to the resistor previously i was providing power to the both resistor and the source as well so inductor won't, don't want to lose that much amount of energy okay that's why the free wheeling diode will be on as soon as the free wheeling diode is on right it will naturally commute all these thyristors okay so th th that thing we'll understand don't worry so let's understand case by case and this thing i have explained in my half hour rectifier as well so if you're going to understand there i've elaborated it at a bit much bigger level so that i don't have to explain everything over and over again that will just be a repetition that's why i tell you to listen everything everything carefully right listen to everything carefully so let's start with this case one from alpha to pi so from alpha to pi it is simple i will trigger my t1 and t2 right if i trigger my t1 and t2 so they will turn on so at omega t goes to alpha t1 and t2 
are triggered so if t1 and t2 are triggered that means what that means t1 and t2 are on and they are in forward conduction like uh, they are in forward blocking mode why all these things i have explained in, in my previous uh, uh, analysis right Th that thing is pretty uh, understood so here this will be on t1 and t2 will be on okay t1 t2 will be on correct now so if t1 t2 on then what what does it mean that means basically my vo will be what vo will be simple vs and what is my is like you can directly uh, analyze this is will be simply equals to my io okay is will be simply equals to my io uh, because this will be off right why this will be off because here right in this point i have positive potential because vs is positive in this pi to uh, sorry alpha to pi right my vs is positive vs is greater than zero so my vo is also greater than zero so at this at the end of this doubt i am getting a positive so here there is a positive and here there is a negative so obviously this doubt right will be reverse biased okay this doubt will be reverse biased now what is happening is that power what is the direction of the power flow so power right power is flowing from again source load why power is flowing from source load simple tell me why power is flowing from source load because what is power for the supply i am talking about so it is vs into is right ps is equals to vs into is it is positive why because v vs is also positive and is is also positive hence power will flow from source load so this first case is pretty simple now from pi to pi plus alpha right what will happen is that my t3 and t4 are in forward blocking mode and what is happening let's say these are on right let's let's just for a second let's assume this is on let's assume this is on so as they are they were on right they were on as soon as what what will happen so from after pi right my vs is negative vs is negative that means that minus will come here so vs is negative that means this like this is negative right polarities will change so this will be minus here and this will be plus and as soon as this becomes plus and minus what what happens this doubt turns on as soon as the doubt turns on right this will totally naturally commuted naturally commuted this thai resistor t1 and thai resistor t2 so this thai resistor will be naturally commuted because all the current will flow through this right all the current will flow through this none of the current will flow through this okay and we can check our assumption as well we can check our assumption whether we are we are correct or not so if this is if this is on so what will happen i will show i will just turn on the switch so if i apply k wheel over it if i apply k wheel through this what will happen okay not not through this if i apply k wheel through this so here i i will apply k wheel like this i will start from i say this this right I, this will be plus minus vd2 right so i start from here basically minus vd2 then this is zero minus vt1 plus vs equals to zero so minus vt2 minus vt1 plus v is equals to zero so what can i say i can say that vt1 plus vt2 is will be equals to vs okay and what is my vs vs is actually less than zero if vs is less than zero that means my vt1 plus vt2 is less than zero that means i am in the reverse blocking mode reverse blocking mode basically okay so both are blocking negative voltage so that will be shared obviously but bo both will block both will block negative voltage so i am in the reverse blocking region and what is happening now is that uh basically my inductor will discharge now because it does it, it is not charging because my supply right v uh, is is what is is zero so ps is zero so i am not providing any supply i am not absorbing as well but inductor is discharging so we'll write here small point that is inductor discharges
inductor discharges through the free wheeling diode okay so obviously as, as it discharges or i can say de-energizes what will happen basically my uh, like dil by dt will be negative hence my what io will reduce now i will reduce but it will reduce at a lower rate than the previous case when it was discharging to supply because it has to supply the power load inductor had to supply the power to supply as well okay to the source as well to the source as well so this is the case two okay so these are the things here t1 t2 will be off t2 will be is is zero io is reducing and my id right this time my current like here right my id was zero because the diode was off because my diode was off as my vd was less than zero right vd is this vd is this potential vd is this potential So VD is this potential, so obviously this will turn off and that's it, right? that's pretty much it. So yeah, ID is 0, IS is 0. And what else can I say? Anything else? ID, ID. so I forgot to wrote here that my ID is equal to IO, right? ID is equal to IO. So this is the case. This is the case and my what is my VO? This time as free wheeling diode is on, right? So it will totally short circuit the output so vo will be zero volts right now vo will be zero volts so all these things will happen in the case two so basically this period is known as the period of free willing action okay free willing action now let's start the case three case three is what pi plus alpha and two pi sorry am i in the same place okay this uh, yeah pi plus alpha and 2 pi so i uh, from pi to pi plus alpha free willing action was happening then what happens at at omega equals to at omega t equals to pi plus alpha t3 and t4 are triggered okay so as t3 and t4 are triggered what will happen as t3 and t4 are triggered they will definitely turn on and as soon as they turn on right as soon as they turn on so basically right as soon as they turn on because previously here they were in the forward blocking mode i can prove that as well how i can prove that i can again apply the k wheel so here plus vt4 plus vs plus vt3 i can complete this short circuit here equal to zero so plus vt4 plus I'm, i was starting from here plus vt4 plus vs plus vt3 plus vs plus vt3 and then i ended right i used i like started from here went to here then i ended here so this will be zero so what is my vt3 plus vt4 it is equals to minus of vs so vs itself is negative right now i have just told you right v vs itself is negative vs itself is negative so what i can say is that this overall thing right this will be positive so this is a positive so this is in the forward blocking mode so hence proved hence proved as well whatever i i have assumed that i have proved here so this is in the forward blocking mode so as soon as i uh, triggered like t3 and t4 they turn on and as soon as they turn on right they will naturally commute this doubt why because now vs is still negative in this region right from pi plus alpha to 2 vs is still negative so as vs is negative what i can say is that this is negative so actually what is the terminal as vs is negative 
this is plus and this is minus right is it it is negative so this plus actually comes across here so here right a plus comes across and here what happens a minus com comes across if you see yeah minus comes across and anyways you can compute the view as well your view will be minus of vs so it will be something positive and your vd actually is minus of view okay vd is actually minus of view so my view this time is minus of vs and my vd is actually vs right you can compute vd will be vs you can apply the cable okay this is my vd i will just mark out the vd this is my vd so vd is vs and vs itself is negative hence as vd is negative it is reverse bias so diode is off i will say diode is off okay so my diode is off now what else can i say is that uh, uh, what about the source current now my source current right i s will be actually what source current will be minus of io again it will be minus of io again oh no 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 it won't be minus yeah it will be minus of io so it will be minus of io source current itself will be negative okay and vs itself is also negative right vs is itself is negative so my power right ps is what ps is what ps is again vs into is which in itself is what which is positive because negative into negative is positive hence again the source is supplying power to the load so my what will happen so basically i'll just take this to the next page so if source is supplying power right that means my like half li square is increasing if half li square is increasing that means is is increasing so io is simply increasing okay so these are the facts and uh, what else is i have written vo i have written vd i have written okay all this uh, points are there only and id right my id will be zero diode current will be zero because it it has reverse bias biased it is reverse bias now Okay, that's why it will be zero. Now, from again two pi, what will happen? As soon as the two pi will hit, right? As soon as the two pi will hit, this was on and this was on. So, but what will happen is that this signs will flip. As soon as this signs flip, this will be plus and this will be minus. So, this minus sign will come across here and this plus sign will come across here. So, this will turn this diode on. So, again here, right? I will have plus sign and here minus sign, right? So, this will turn this diode on. This diode will be turned on just the same reasons as in the case two, so this will uh, turn this diode on, and this T three and T four will be off because this will be in the reverse blocking mode now. This will be in the reverse blocking mode, and my T T two and T one are in the forward blocking mode. So diode on T three T four naturally. Commutated, okay. T three and T four naturally commutated. Again, there will be in this region, right? Again, there will be free willing action. Okay. Again, there will be free willing action. So diode will be on, and my I S will be zero. Okay, because no current will flow. All the four, like my T T two, T one, and T two, you can apply the K wheels. Will be in the forward blocking mode. Okay, so what will be my V? O this time V O will be zero. Okay, V O will be zero, and like source will not supply any current. V S into I S will be zero. Okay, and obviously my inductor will de-energize through this free willing action. So my I O will reduce basically. I O will reduce. Okay, so I O reduces everything is fine. So uh, uh, this time right, I D is equals to I O. This is my I D. Have I marked my ID previously? Okay, I haven't even marked the ID as well. That is wrong, na? Should have marked the ID. 
so id will be always positive it cannot be negative right Di like diode current cannot flow in the negative direction so i haven't even marked the id that is my fault this is id okay so next what will happen is that yeah that will be pretty much it id will reduce this will be off and then again the same cycle will follow from two pi plus alpha right so these are the waveforms not that much to understand here because like what my assumption is load current is almost constant why by uh, like my l l is l is very high l is very high right l is very high so like this is in the supply waveform and my output right from 0 to alpha from uh, this here to here there will be basically free wheeling action basically here right this is these are written wrong here this will be basically diode on okay this is not okay, this is a bit wrong things are written here this should be okay In this alpha right from like every like what is the period of free willing action free willing action happens every alpha so in this period from 2 pi to 2 pi plus alpha okay okay this is this color i should not use i should use some other color if i can find yeah this and this pi to pi plus alpha and this 0 to alpha okay all these are basically All these are basically periods of free willing action. Free okay these are basically free willing action okay so in this region I have already proved to you that T1 and T2 will be on they will be triggered and here T3 and T4 will be on here my D free willing diode will be on in this particular alpha duration so my it4 will be something like this and id will be uh, equals to io for only alpha duration right for alpha duration every like it will repeat after every pi cycle so its period is pi and it will be on for every pi, uh, pi duration uh, sorry alpha duration and it2 it4 will be on here okay and its its period will be what 2 pi right because it is repeating after every 2 pi period and this it1 also will repeat every 2 pi source current again average source current will be zero it is sometimes negative io and sometimes positive io and sometimes zero as well okay previously it wasn't zero but sometimes here it will be zero as well so uh, due to which due to the free willing diode right and load current is always constant okay these are the waveforms you can zoom in and see and output voltage is zero when the free wheeling action takes place so there is a simple question which we, we can solve basically so in a single phase full converter the losses in the converter is 25 watts so they have told me what is the converter losses okay and average voltage across the diode is 180 volt average voltage across the diode is 180 volts then power factor of the source if the load current is assumed to be constant load current is assumed to be constant then what is the power factor of the source and average voltage across the diode is what average voltage across the diode is 180 volts okay and vd is measured like this so vd is measured like this right actually we don't we should not measure vd like this the question is a bit wrong what we should have done is average voltage across the diode this should have been the case because normally we measure from anode to cathode voltage and here this should have been negative right minus that would have been more correct question so now now it is more correct just hold on a second i will drink a bit of water yeah now like uh, now it is correct so what is my vd actually vd is equals to minus of vo right because vo is like this vo is okay i don't have enough space
view is like this right so view is like this what i can say is that uh, uh basically my vd average right vd average will be equals to minus view average okay so my view average will be what minus of this so my vd average is negative 180 so minus of minus is 180 volts okay 180 volts what are they asking they, they have told me load current is assumed to be constant so if io is constant io is constant what can i say i can say a lot of things first of all let's understand what have they asked us to find out they have asked us to find cos uh, like uh, cos phi is right cos phi is so to find out cos phi is i need ps divided by ss so ss to find out ss i need v uh, vm uh, vs rms and is rms so vs rms i can compute although they haven't told me about the supply from this output voltage information i can compute that i will just explain just in a second and what is ps ps is equals to po if my converter is ideal ideal but here right my converter is not ideal there are losses in the converter of 25 volts so ps will be like the load has to only supply the losses right sorry the source has to only supply the losses load cannot the net net load cannot supply uh, power unless this is a generator okay that that will also do one numerical on that they will understand so if my vo if my vo average is positive right if my vo average is positive it will only absorb power it can never deliver power so here right obviously source has to supply the power of the loss so uh, ps will be equals to po po ps will be equals to po plus loss divided by ss what is ss ss is vs rms Uh, so what is this equals to uh, so this right uh, like what is po equals to p right as my current is constant it is equals to vo average into io average as current is constant right then only this is possible as this was not not this would have not been possible plus obviously loss is 25 watts they have already mentioned the loss is 25 watts divided by vs rms vs rms is vm by root 2 which i don't know i do, don't know the like vm value because they haven't specified me the supply into is rms what will be is rms so is rms right interesting funny fact is is rms will not be simply uh, equals to io rms because here right if you if you observe this graph can you tell me what will be is rms so if i square it right this will be like this will be the positive only this will be also positive but here for alpha duration right for alpha duration this is this is absent so what is happening is that if i square so io square right you, you just square so not io square is square if you just square is what you will see is it will be also a periodic waveform of period pi it will not be a periodic waveform of 2 pi why because all this negative right will become positive and this square and this square will be same because negative square is also uh, positive only positive square is positive and negative square is also positive so this will repeat after every pi for what duration this is zero this is zero for alpha duration so what will be the area then so area for is right area for is so is rms right is rms will be simply i have to take the root of this and i have to take the mean mean is what is the period period is pi this time because it is repeating after every pi and what is the area it is io square because i have squared it what is the area of the square area of the squared function it is io square into what what is the width this width is what this is pi minus alpha because this this much is alpha and this overall this whole thing is pi so if i subtract alpha from pi i will get pi minus alpha and that is the width for which uh i am computing the area so pi minus alpha and this will be equals to what so they have provided me uh, alpha right alpha is 90 alpha is 90 and this is with free willing action so as i assume that load current is constant so whenever this free willing action kicks in obviously the working that i have explained will be used here so this will be io will come out okay into pi minus pi by 2 alpha is pi by 2 divided by pi so it will be 1 by root 2 
okay have they told me the no they haven't told me the average current but they have told me the average voltage so i have the average voltage right so this is this isrms i will be able to compute okay this will be simply io by root 2 okay so i need io average and vo average i know i need vm so i need io average which is equals to io itself and i need vm right so uh, what is io so basically i know, I know vo average so io average will be what io average will be simply v average minus e divided by r so what is vo average vo average is simply 180 volts minus e is 80 r is 10 right r is 10 it is 10 amperes okay It is 10 amperes. <laughs> so, uh, this is 10 amperes, right? So, now what what i will say is uh sorry i was just lost in some thought uh so this is 10 amperes so my isrms right isrms will be what isrms will be root 2 of this 10 by root 2 is 7.07 .07 amperes and one thing i know one thing what do i know is what is the formula for vo average so vo average right vo average is equals to vs for alpha to pi only after that what happens free cooling action happens it again goes to zero so this will be this will repeat after every pi cycle this will be equals to vs so vm cos not cos sorry sin omega d so have i written in the supply so the supply right so i should have written this is this has like this that my vs is something like this it is vm sin omega d so from here i will be able to compute my vm okay so view average i know right view average this is the view average formula view average i know what is the view average uh, view average is equals to 180 volts 180 into pi and this is what this is basically vm into uh, this is cos 1 plus cos alpha cos alpha plus 1 so cos alpha is like uh, uh, cos 90 is 0 so vm will be simply 180 into pi right vm will be simply 180 into pi let's see what that is so it will be almost a multiple of 3 uh, so 180 into pi 565 so it will be 565.5 volts okay so vm is this right so i will just replace everything everything in this equation right in this equation so what is vo average into io average vo average into io average 180 into 10 so it will be 1800 1800 plus 25 so my cos phi is right cos phi is will be 1825 on the top and in the bottom i have 565.5 divided by root 2 into 7.5 Zero 07 okay so if i just compute this real quick into 7.07 .07 into 1825 so this will be almost 0 0.456 0 0.4 am i done it correctly this is 1800 and i know it's 10 yeah plus 25 1825 correct so this is correct only okay so yeah this is correct only t 10 amps okay so anything here i am doing wrong that is what i am assuming i'm just thinking something that am i missing out on something right that is what i'm thinking 18 to 800 so another 600 yeah 1800 yeah fine 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 everything is correct only so like, like this uh, 
this thing right this will be 4, 0.456 so this uh, PO right this PO you got to find found out in different way as well this uh, this thing right this thing so here there are two methods to find out finding out PO so PO like I have explained this in, in my previous uh, lecture as well I think method one PO I can find find out from this V average into IO average so this will be equals to what because the load current is constant only valid when the load current is constant only I will like I have mentioned uh, mentioned this many times but I know students will forget I know you will forget so only valid when current is constant else this is not valid right? this is not valid so this will be V average into IO average which is equals to 118 to 10 equals to 1800 watts and what is the method to okay, I need to take this more app PO is what it is basically the power dissipated here and power dissipated here because this will dissipate zero power so this will be plus e into i average okay so this will be the power right and this will be equal to this only when i o r m s is equal to i average which is the case so what is my uh, i o r m s it is simply equal to 10 so 100 into r r is 10 plus 80 e is 80 and into 10 so this becomes equals to 1800 so then i add 25 with it and this power factor becomes 0 0.456 so uh, that's how we get to this answer right so like you can do this using two methods and yeah, like this is not looking that great so i'll just change the color <laughs> this is also no, not looking that great yeah this i'll change so it will be 0 0.456 and it will be lagging uh, like with the Fourier series coefficient you will understand so now we'll study about the semi-controlled rectifiers so what are semi-controlled rectifiers in this case right either both thyristors and diodes are used simultaneously during Conduction. So these are semi-controlled. That's why they are the name semi-controlled because I'm controlling one half and other half is uh, like I, I have no control over. That's why. Now there are two uh, configurations for semi-controlled uh, rectifiers. One is symmetrical converter. Another one is asymmetrical uh, asymmetrical configuration. I will we will see two one by one. Don't worry about that. Okay. And the camera was a bit I know tilted. So for continuous conduction, one device from the upper group and from the low, uh, lower group must always be conducting why because here right like up until now what you have said so if these two SCRs are on is that any use to us no right so these two SCRs are known as common what this has common cathode okay and this has common anode so this group is responsible for current flow from source to load and these two are responsible from load to flow load to source so obviously either of them has to be on if there is no free willing doubt if there is no free willing doubt then if the current needs to be continuous that means this like the, either of these two needs to be on and either of these two needs to be on then only there will be current flow from like load to source and current will be always continuous conduction mode okay that's why this last statement so now let's understand this one so there are two configurations we'll first understand the symmetrical configuration in this configuration right each leg of scr contains one scr and one diode sorry each leg of converter contains one scr and one diode that is basically leg means this right this is the this is one leg this is one leg and this is one leg leg of the converter okay one leg of the converter so here uh, i am observing t1 is scr and this d4 is diode okay so and t3 is scr and d4 d2 is diode so uh, whenever there will be they will be on right so the current will flow due to this t1 and d2 and current will flow due to this t3 and t4 okay so is current flow like this possible current flow like this also is possible but it all depends on the load conditions which we will analyze and we have analyzed this uh, previously as well i think okay like there was some free willing action all those things were happening in the pre uh, like previous lecture of questions so th these were the cases right these were the cases so each lake of converter contains one scr and one diode so let's analyze this this will understand better so here right from alpha to pi things are pretty simple because this diode doesn't need any control because if we, if we, ha we have already studied so much of uh, forward blocking mode we know that this uh, d2 uh, this cannot block any forward voltage and 
I am applying some forward voltage across it from 0 to pi. So this diode will be always on from 0 to pi. So D2, like here itself I will say D2 always on from 0 to pi. Why I will explain in the next slide and D4 always on. So I'll just duplicate this thing. Okay, yeah. So D4 will always be on, on from pi to 2 pi. Pi to 2 pi. Okay, so why uh, that on the analysis we'll understand. So here this is simple, right? Because I'm applying some positive voltage. If I like trigger this, right? What is the voltage across this or what is the current? Current you will flow, current direction flow you will see the current is flowing like this. Because I have assumed that I have a constant current. I have assumed, assumed that I have a constant current. Hence, current has to flow like this, right? Current has to flow like this. So, the current direction is positive. I2 is positive. So, obviously, D2 will be on. So, in this case, my T1 and D2 will be on. Okay. And my IO will be equals to. Sorry. My IS will be equals to. IO simply. It will be plus right now. And my VO. VO will be. Simply equals to VS. Okay, so like you can apply the key will and what else? So if you measure the voltages this this right these two thyristors the voltage will be negative So they will be in the reverse blocking mode. Okay, so this is the case here because at Omega T equals to alpha my T1 is triggered T1 is triggered right now next what is happening? from pi to pi plus alpha now here the interesting thing happens from pi to pi uh, pi minus alpha you might say so d2 will be turned off because a negative voltage is getting applied i will say correct i will say you are correct okay now you might say then what will happen this t1 will also be turned off because this is in the reverse blocking mode okay fine now what about this t3 right t3 was previously off t3 was previously off and it will be off because t3 waiting for gate pulse okay so it will not be on it will be off t4 now t not t4 d4 d4 will be on right i just explained d4 will be on why will d4 be on d4 on why will d4 be on so if i measure the voltage right if i measure the voltage so current has to flow now d2 is turned off why is d2 is turned off because there is some negative voltage here. So if I assume this as ground, right? If I assume this as ground, okay. Then this is some negative voltage in the, uh, okay. Not negative, sorry. The Vs is negative this time, right? Vs is negative. Vs is negative here. Vs is less than zero because from pi after pi, Vs becomes negative, right? So Vs is less than zero. Okay, I don't, I am running out of colors. That is bad. Vs is less than zero. So Vs is less than zero, right? So this is actually this is plus and this is minus. So this plus comes here on the cathode of the diode and this is grounded. So obviously this diode turns off. Okay. Ground is just for the uh, like explanation part, but you can apply the K-wheel as well from there also you can understand or like what I will assume few states. I will assume that this D4 is turned on and like this guaranteed to turn on because this will be uh, kept on due to the supply i will also prove it and this t1 right this t1 will also be kept on due to the t1 is on due to the inductor okay t1 is on due to the inductor right t1 is on due to the inductor because inductor will keep on keep it on because current has to flow no current can flow only through this because this d2 is off why is the d2 is off now if i measure the voltage right if i measure vd2 what is vd2 so if i apply k will i will start from here minus vd2 okay minus v, uh, vs and okay where can i go that is what i'm uh, okay I can, okay yeah mine this is what I, I can start from here right minus vd2 plus vs and right so minus vd2 
plus vs equals to 0. So, my vd2 is equals to what? vd2 equals to vs and I know that vs is less than 0. So, vd2 is also less than 0. So, my assume state was correct. Assume state was correct. That this d2 will be of as the voltage across it is negative. And this, what is id4? id4 id4 is io which is greater than 0 hence this is also correct right? so id4 direction is also correct so this is also correct that this d4 diode is on that that statement is also correct this current is continuous conduction that that's why there is large inductance this will try to flow a, a current anyhow so current is flowing through here now obviously this t3 cannot turn on because it needs a gate pulse right? it needs a gate pulse gate pulse as it will not turn on so obviously it how many pathways it has it can either flow through here okay but here right this is off and it has to go through this this is also off so only one path it has to this t1 so inductor will change its voltage somehow that this will still be in the forward conduction mode so t1 is still in the forward conduction mode okay t1 is still in the forward conduction mode so actually what is happening here actually if you observe it carefully right like basically free willing action is happening so what is my vo in in this case so without the free willing layout, I'm actually getting the free willing action. My VO, right? My VO will be simply equals to zero. Why it will be zero? Because if you apply simple K wheel, okay, it will be zero. So I am getting a free willing action without the free willing doubt. Okay. So that is the case. So these are the cases. So you can again analyze for pi plus alpha. So pi for pi plus alpha things will be simple. This d4 will be on and at omega t equals to pi plus alpha my t3 will be simply on. Okay. So as my t3 is on, as my t3 is on. So obviously now that current right, it has two paths. It, it can either flow through this supply and either from this uh, t1 so you will say sir why now t3 is on so it will turn it off why it will, it will happen there are two reasons there are two reasons so first reason is t3 will naturally commute at t1 okay i will show you so here if i apply k will now so i will i will start from here minus vt1 plus vs equals to zero so minus vt1 plus vs equals to zero so what can i say my vt1 is equals to vs and what do i know i know vs is less than zero in this like after pi itself from pi to 2 pi vs is negative right so vt1 is less than zero so if vt1 is less than zero that means what that means basically it is in the reverse blocking mode so as soon as this turns on it will commit at this and there is another reason what is the other reason i will just explain here so what is my is is will be this time you just apply ksl here right is is minus of it4 and it4 is io so is will be minus of io so is is negative because io is positive io is always less than constant value right io is positive and my vs in this range is also negative right because from pi to 2 pi vs is negative so what is my ps ps is greater than zero ps is equals to vs into is both are negative hence what is happening it is greater than zero so power flow power right power flow is from again source to load power flow is from source to load okay this is the direction of the flow of the power okay so what is happening is that what is happening is that obviously everyone wants to recharge a bit right so inductor was discharging okay uh, although like it was free willing action it, it was discharging not to the source this time through a like through simply a wire short circuit wire okay but here what is happening power is flowing from source load so obviously here my inductor is energizing so my inductor is again energizing it would want to energize right because obviously uh, it it has to again gain energy so that in the next stage when it will lose energy it will not like it will totally not go to zero because it has to gain some energy then again it can lose that same amount of energy so that overall the energy is same overall in a cycle energy is same so that is also another reason like that is also another analogy you can understand that why this t1 will be off because the current is flowing through this uh, supply and this supply is actually delivering power although it may seem this is absorbing and no 
current current direction and the voltage direction both are changed so this is actually delivering power right so that is the direction of power flow so this is also another intuition that you can understand again from 2 pi to 2 pi plus alpha same thing will happen that free wheeling action will occur so here as free wheeling action occur what can i say so this right uh, basically again this due to the same reasons d4 will turn off right? d4 will turn off and this d2 will be on i have explained this previously as well uh, uh, like from 0 to pi d2 will always be on and from pi to 2 pi d4 will be on so d4 will be automatically off here and you, you can apply the key wheels and you can prove for yourself and d2 will be on and inductor will keep t3 on again so there will be again some free wheeling free wheeling action okay so this time t3 and d2 will be on it will keep inductor will keep this in the forward conduction mode okay that's the just the way to have free wheeling action so my vo will be zero and my inductor will simply discharge right so my vs is positive in this case my is is zero because no current is flowing okay and what uh what else basically my this time my id2 is actually equals to io okay is equals to it3 so in this case is right in this previous case okay here my id okay this is actually id4 not id4 right this id4 actually io okay and is is obviously is is obviously uh, minus io so that is sorted and this is equals to my it3 right this is equals to my it3 so these are the cases these are the things right now okay so these are the voltages right so i hope you got the understanding here what is actually happening in this time right my id4 is actually io equals to my it1 because it kept the t1 on right that's a t1 on and here right my io is on so this is equals to my simply it1 equals to my id2 okay yeah these are the uh, currents so you can observe right like this is just almost like a uh, full rectifier with a free wheeling doubt and if four diodes uh, four rectifiers are there four SCRs are there and a free wheeling doubt is there yeah, almost the same waveform right so here t3 and d4 is uh, t3 and d2 is on t1 d2 is on t1 d4 and all these things so here right again same thing is actually happening but with different method okay because here one SCR and one diode is on Th working is different but it seems if the two waveforms are given right you will not be able to distinguish whether this will be a full wave rectifier with free wheeling diode or a semi converter right so basically in this regions free wheeling action action occurs okay free wheeling action occurs okay so these are the things and like this is my voltage uh, waveform and this is the current will always be concerned again source current is almost like a free wheeling action again but this time right what is happening is that the diode right the free wheeling diode is not present so that extra amount of period for which the current needs to flow is flown by this it1 like this th thyristors the two thyristors and the two diodes right so here what is the duration of the current flow through the diode it will be pi right because this diode has to flow pi current and then this thyristor also has to flow this pi current same for its own natural pair that is diode so diode right diode is on till you can observe this is pi the diode is on till pi to 2 pi it is perfect pi to 2 pi and then again what happens in this region right this thyristor t1 is on okay thyristor t1 is on and the other diode that is d4 turns on so uh, like here okay this is d4 okay the, yeah the other diode turns on so in this up until here right what was happening the d2 diode was on right d2 diode was on but here d2 turns off but at that instant d4 turns on right d4 turns on so obviously t4 takes that current from load to source so one diode has to at least turn on to carry the current from load to source and the source to load current has been carried out by the thyristors okay so this is the working of this uh, particular single phase full wave rectifier 
with a symmetrical load. So, so why is it called symmetrical? Because the conduction period right, of the thyristor and the conduction period of the diode are both same that is pi. Okay. But in case of asymmetrical, the conduction period of the, this is continuous conduction. The conduction period of the uh, diode and the SCR are different. Okay, thyristor are different. So, in asymmetrical configuration, one leg of converter contains two ACRs. So, one leg will contain two ACRs now and other leg will contain two diodes. Okay, previously it was different. So, like the output waveforms will be almost similar. Uh, the voltage waveform will be almost similar, but the working will be a bit different. So, we will see the working of this asymmetrical semiconverter. So, we will again start from this time. Okay. Uh, case one is already gone so i think that something here wrong okay so case one is automatically gone for some reason so i have to copy back the case one here so I will, what i will do is do is just i will add a page and totally copy this and change this to case one for some reason case one i, I may have deleted so <coughs> case one is this and case one is from <coughs> alpha to pi case one is from alpha to pi okay so here what is actually happening is that uh, here right from alpha to pi my at alpha right omega t equals to alpha my t1 will be triggered so at omega t equals to alpha my t1 will be triggered triggered and what can i say about these diodes right about the diodes like here itself i can say is that my d2 will be on when d2 will be always on d2 will be always on D2 will be always on when in the positive half cycle right in the positive half cycle D2 will always be on for the same reasons as I explained in the previous uh, circuit rectifier and D4 not D4 this time D3 will always be on in the negative half cycle now it can be on for larger amount of, of amounts of period as well that also we will understand right but this one I know now here at omega t equals to alpha t1 is getting triggered as t1 is getting triggered right current will flow in this direction so uh, current like this t4 will be naturally commutated so as t4 is naturally commutated so this d2 will be on right because d2 is on in the positive half cycle so in the case one my t1 and d2 are both on why the reasons have been explained in the previous analysis as well so if these are on right so what will happen is that a constant current will flow that is i naught which will be equals to equals to i uh, is will be equals to i t1 will be equals to i naught right is equals to i d2 this time okay and which is so my is is positive right is is greater than zero it is positive so my vs is what uh, like vs in this region right from like zero to pi vs is always greater than zero Vs is always greater than zero. Okay. So what is PS? What is PS? PS is equals to Vs into Is greater than zero. Okay. Uh, Vs into Is greater than zero. So what I can say? is that uh, power right as this is positive so power will flow from source to load hence obviously my inductor will charge only inductor will charge it will energize right next what is in the case to what is happening is at pi right at pi what is happening this d2 will turn off and this will also turn off this d3 will turn on and as as soon as this d3 turns on this will naturally commutate my t1 okay d3 on hence it will naturally commuted my t1 t1 will be in the reverse blocking mode you can uh, check with the kvl right so d3 will turn on so here right i should have done this things on this and this 
this and this. So T T1 will be off only naturally commuted and this T3 will be turned on. So you can apply the key will and you can check the vol voltage. You will say it is negative. It is in the reverse blocking mode. Okay. And what else will turn on? Now T4 cannot turn on, right? T4 cannot turn on because T4, right? T4. T4 is waiting for trigger okay because it is not triggered yet so t4 cannot turn on okay if acr is already on keeping it on is simple but if acr is off right turning it on is difficult because i can only turn it on with the help of gate pulse right if it is already on that's fine that's totally fine so what will happen is this d3 is on so this will keep this d2 on as well this will also hence d2 will be on why d2 will be on because inductor because load current needs to flow right load current is continuous okay and what inductor will do is that what will inductor do basically this will be on as this is on right as this is on what will happen is that like current cannot flow through this because this is off right this is off so current cannot flow through this only this has like current needs to flow right only this is the path at which current can go this is off right so it will make its voltage polarity such that d2 will also be on d2 will also be on okay so d2 will be on in this case so in this case right what what will be on what things will be on t1 and d2 both will be on okay not t1 sorry sorry t uh, d3 and d2 uh, like uh, i will just write down the currents now i'll just write down the currents okay so what is happening basically right now right we are getting the same thing that we were getting previously free willing action but this time the free willing action is provided by d3 and d2 okay so this is the free willing action basically so what are the currents if i just uh, talk about the currents right what is my view now so this will be on so if this is on so i can i can keep this on so what is my view right now so view will be simply zero if i apply a simple key will here view will be simply zero right so your view is simply zero volts okay next up is your is what is your is so is right is is basically equals to zero because no current is flowing this is also off this is also off so is will be zero Hence, no power is being supplied, just free willing action is happening. Load is discharging through this uh, short circuited path, right? There is no power flow, okay? So, yeah, that is what is happening. And my what is my ID, ID3 and ID2? ID3 is equals to ID2, uh, that is equals to IO, that is equals to IO. So, these are the currents basically. ID1 is also zero and vo is also zero vs is negative but that doesn't matter because we are supplying no current now as soon as pi plus alpha what is happening at pi plus alpha omega t equals to pi plus alpha uh, my t4 is T4 is triggered. Okay, so as soon as the T4 is triggered, it will obviously turn on. And as soon as it turns on, right? right? As soon as it turns on, what will happen is that it will naturally commute it, this doubt D2, right? It will naturally commute it, this doubt D2. So D2 will be natural commutation. So D2 will turn off. Okay, so D2 will turn off. And obviously D3 was already on, it will be still be on. So current will flow from again source, right? This time my IS will be what? IS will be minus IO. My VO will be minus VS. It will be positive again. But as it is minus IO, my PS, right? PS is VS into IS. So 
IS is negative, IS is less than zero, and V is also V S is also negative, right? Overall, this is positive, hence power eight, power eight. Power will again flow from source to load. Okay, this time the load will energize. Okay, so power will flow from, flow from source to load. Next, what I can say is that. Basically, uh, power is flowing from source to load. Next, uh, the current, right? So, so my IT4 will be equals to ID3 will be equals to IO, right? And what else can I say? Is that my IS is equals to minus of IO? Fine. So these are these are okay. And my other other currents are zero. So they are off basically. So this is the case. You can check, right? Are these in reverse bias? You can check the voltage across them by using simple cable, and you will get yes, they are in the reverse bias zone. Next, in the case four, right? In the case four, what is happening? At two pi, this D three will try to turn off. Okay, this D three will try to turn off. But what will happen is this will not turn off because this thyristor will turn off. This thyristor will turn off because this will be in the natural commutation. Why? Because D two turns on. So at two pi, D two is on, and as soon as D two is turned on, right? And this T four, T T one is waiting for pulse. T1 is waiting for trigger, right? T1 won't turn on. So D2 is turned on, and as soon as D2 turns on, it will naturally commute it. T4, T4 will be naturally commuted it. As for T1, right? In case of T1, waiting, waiting for trigger. Waiting for trigger. Okay, I'm waiting for trigger. Next, what I can say, what I can say is that. So, uh, hence, obviously, this will not naturally commute at D three, and load will be such that it will keep this both on. So, both my again D three and D two will be on. Hence, again my I S will be zero. My VO will be simply zero because why? The these right, this will be on. So if I simply apply the cable, it will be zero again. Okay, and what else can I say? Uh, basically, IO is this. So uh, I uh, this ID two equals to ID three equals to IO. Okay, so these are equal and that's it. So that's basically it, right? That's basically it. And obviously, my inductor will. D energize it will uh, discharge basically. Okay, this will be the four cases, and what will be the waveforms? Waveforms will be something like this. Waveforms will be something like this. So what I can say is, from zero to alpha, right? This time instead of the thyristor and diode turning on, both diodes will turn off now. Turn on now. Okay, the free wheeling action is provided by the both diodes, right? D three and D three and D two, right? D three and D two. Okay, and this is on like here. T one and D two are on. And here, right again, D three and D two provide the uh, free wheeling action. D three and D two, okay. And again here, T three and uh, uh, what will be on this side? Right? This what will be on T three and not sorry, not T three actually. T four and D two, I think. This is. T four and so T four and D three yeah T four and D D three will be on so here this will be T four and D three right yeah these will be on here okay so this is D three T one D two this is D three D four so D three D two right they are on more period of time if you observe the diode current right diode current is on for what duration so diode current right diode current is on for The duration of what pi plus two alpha. Previously, it was only on for pi, and the thyristors were also on for pi. But thyristors are now on for only what pi minus alpha, right? Thyristors are only on on for pi minus alpha. Okay, uh, because after every alpha, they are getting naturally commuted, and my sub source. 
the source current like source current is same only this duration is only pi minus alpha only okay sorry like i just messed up here this should be alpha right why this should be alpha because this right this range is what like if you observe this is starting from what this is starting from pi so from pi to what is this this is 2 pi so from pi to 2 pi d3 will be on and another extra alpha d3 will be on to provide the current flow to provide the free willing action so this is total pi and this extra is alpha so overall this should be pi plus alpha that's exactly what is written that my diode conduction period is pi plus alpha and my thyristor conduction period is pi minus al uh, alpha that means that both of them are asymmetrical both of them are asymmetrical symmetrical they are not symmetrical okay they are not same okay and again like if you see the output voltage waveform you will not be able to say like are we talking about semi convert converter symmetrical semi converter asymmetrical semi converter or are we talking about uh like free willing doubt like as uh, full wave rectifier with free willing doubt so these output waveform we can't say but with other things right we can say so again the same action is happening free willing action okay if you observe here this point this point this point all of this are basically examples of free willing action right so all of these are other things basically that you should know for a semi converter okay we have understood semi converter so one th key point that you should like just know just for information purpose that this t1 t2 t3 t4 always conduct together and these pairs right these pairs are actually called natural pairs because naturally when current is flowing normally okay before inductor was there current was only flowing due to this so that's why they natural because inductor provides some unnatural things in the circuit so they are also called the natural pairs just like few couples right you see few couples they are, they are naturally like they look like a couple they look like a couple right so they're naturally like that so this pair is also like a natural couple okay then uh then t1 t3 and t4 t4 uh t4 t2 can never conduct together okay so t what is t1 t3 t1 and t3 is this okay they can never conduct together because how can they convert because if they need to conduct right current needs to either needs to flow like this or this t3 saying current needs to flow like this that is never possible so they can never conduct together then t1 t4 t2 t3 uh, t3 can conduct together if load is inductive okay and whenever they will conduct together right they will provide what they will provide the free willing action free willing action free willing action and source will get short circuited will the source get short circuited am i correct so if both of them conduct right so what will happen is that i will start from here and okay no they won't get short circuited right they won't get short circuited okay no 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 just run. i started from here right started from here this is not conducting this is t1 t4 okay yeah yeah basically they are short circuited right so this point is sorted this point is like short circuited basically so this point and this point right this point will be short circuited so i can directly okay no there is a load as well right there is a load as well so if i go from here okay. there is a load as well in between so no that won't be the case that is for some other case so there will be free willing action basically okay so these are the analysis so now whatever we have learned right we'll apply those in a question like many questions has come up from free willing out from semi converter and trust me those are just easy questions you will be able to solve in seconds so we will solve the questions now the figure below shows the circuit diagram of a control rectifier supplied from a 230 volt 50 hertz supply okay i have a 10 is to 1 transformer and like uh and the supply for this primary for this is connected to a 230 volt 50 hertz supply assume that all devices are ideal fine the firing angles of thyristor t1 and t2 are 90 so this is 90 for, for t1 and for uh, t2 right it is 270 degrees respectively the rms value of the current through the diode d3 in amperes okay so we have to find the rms value of the uh, current through the diode d3 now one thing to, you have to notice here is what type of load we have so up until now what we have been analyzing we have been analyzing semi converters with inductive load right that was the assumption because current was continuous but here my load is load is purely the 
resistive and as it it is resistive or like if there was a re load the analysis become becomes very very easy the analysis becomes very very easy so what i can say is what i can say the load is purely resistive the load is purely resistive that means what that means the load has no control over turning on and off of this diodes right load has no control now we can solve this in one second or you can take few time bit amount of time as well they are asking us the current uh, rms current through this id3 so first thing is like first glance will be oh how do i find rms current it will be sinusoidal it will be some non linear function but once you understand right like uh, the solution they, then you will say oh this was so easy so current through this r right current through this r can never flow like this okay current through this r can never flow like flow like this and if the current can never flow like this right the voltage drop can never be less than zero so if my vo is something like this this is my vo and my diode d3 the potential is something like this right so my vo is equals to minus vd3 and what do i know i know that my vo will always be what vo will always be greater than or equals to zero it can never be uh, like less than zero why because current direction of current can only be like this direction of current cannot be like this right it is not possible for current to flow if current flows like this then where will this flow this diode d3 doesn't allow current in this direction this thyristor t2 doesn't allow current in this direction this thyristor t1 doesn't allow current in this direction so current can never flow right in this direction current can only flow in the from top to bottom fashion so because d3 d2 will allow current in this direction d1 will allow current in this direction and d3 will also allow okay but if current flows in this direction right so what will be vo vo will be greater than or equals to zero as current can only in this direction right so uh, that is a thing okay so uh, now obviously if like this d3 diode the voltage right vd3 will always be negative as vd3 is always negative so d3 never on never on and if d3 is never on right then obviously id3 will be zero always id3 will be zero always okay regardless of the firing angles i don't care always hence what what can i say i can say that my id3 rms will be equal to simply 0 amperes so answer was that simple the answer would be 0 amperes right why because like current can never flow through this diode so sometimes what happens is they give some big question okay and at the end the answer is so simple so did i use any formula here no right i didn't use any formula here i just use simple brains and concepts whatever we learned till now so if you like go and solve the uh, py quiz they of course there will be few questions where we will use the formulas but you can always derive them but most of them you have to apply bit of uh, your conceptual knowledge as well right so that is also very important so let's say for example this uh, question right so here i have a uh, rectifier with like d all three are diode and this is only thyristor again my load is pure resistive once like once i see the load right then i should be uh, aware that load cannot turn on diodes or is it because resistive it is purely resistive load hence it does not have the power it is not a no it is not a inductive load okay so they will turn on according to what according to basically the uh, supply conditions okay so here what will happen is in the given rectifier delay angle t1 is measured from the positive going zero crossing v vhs 30 degrees so my alpha is alpha is 30 degrees next if the input voltage vhs is this 100 sin omega t the average voltage across r so so they are asking us the vo average okay 
so for us to compute the view average right i need to first of all understand how the waveform looks how the upper waveform looks right so this is simple this is with pure resistive load so during the positive high cycle this t1 and d2 will be in the forward bias region but t1 will be forward blocking first then it will be in the forward conduction and d2 will be always forward bias right and in the negative half cycle d4 and d3 will be in the forward bias this already we have analyzed this we know so in the positive half cycle right this will be forward bias right fine because what is happening is that if i assume this as ground right if i assume this as ground there is zero current through this so this is also ground okay this is also ground and this is also ground so here i have some positive potential and on the end side i have negative potential so obviously this will be in the forward conduction mode and here i have some ground potential and here i have some negative potential so this will be forward bias so even though d2 is forward bias right t1 is not on t1 is not on and d3 is off why d3 is off because i assume this as ground so this end is ground and this is some negative potential so d3 will be off this is ground this p side is ground and this is some positive potential so this will this will also be off okay so this will be off and induct there is no inductance to change the polarity voltage so keep these things on right there is no nothing like that so simple thing will be from pi to to pi not pi to 2 pi sorry 0 to pi d2 will be on okay d2 will be on but from alpha to pi t1 will be on because t1 was in the forward blocking mode from uh, 0 to alpha from 0 to alpha t1, t1 was in block forward blocking mode okay so now like how will the graph look like so if it is not on right then obviously if t1 is not on no current flows because d3 is any of so 0 plus 0 and this should be also equal to 0 so no current flows so vo will be 0 between 0 to alpha 0 to alpha okay then just after uh, like triggering t1 turns on d2 is any anyways one so my vo will be equal to simply vs apply the cable vo will be simply equal to vs just like a control rectifier waveform okay then what is happening this is vm then at pi right at omega t goes to pi obviously i don't have any scrs i have simple diodes so they will simply turn on as soon as this voltage polarity flips they will simply turn on you can check the conditions they will turn on d3 and d4 will be on so as soon as d3 and d4 are on they will totally follow minus vs and as vs is negative in from pi to 2 pi it will be positive minus vs will be positive so this will be 2 pi okay okay so this is uh, alpha pi to pi now like can you compute the average area yes right did we use any formula no again we have to derive the average area formula uh, like th that's why the derivation part is also very very important so what will be view average like what is the period of this period is 2 pi right because it is not repeating after v by because after pi this uh, pattern is different okay so this will be integration 0 to 2 pi i will what i will do is i will divide it so integration not 0 alpha to pi because 0, uh, zero to alpha it is 0 only so alpha to pi it is vm sin omega t right and what is vm sin omega t 100 sin 100 pi t d omega t okay and what about the other case other cases from pi to 2 pi from pi to 2 pi this will be plus from pi to 2 pi minus 100 sin 100 pi t d omega t okay so this will be the integration so if you want to compute the value right you can simply compute the value now everything is pretty routine right so view average will be 1 by 2 pi this will be what this will be simply 1 plus so 100 i can take common right Okay. 
वन प्लस कॉस अल्फा वन प्लस कॉस अल्फा ओके प्लस वट इज दिस दिस इज टू टाइम्स हंड्रेड राइट बिकॉज वट आई विल डू इज कॉस ऑफ लाइक कॉस ऑफ टू पाई माइनस कॉस ऑफ पाई दिट विल दिस विल बी सिंपली टू सो टू टाइम्स हंड्रेड दिस विल बी सिंपली टू राइट सो दिस विल बिकम थ्री प्लस कॉस अल्फा सो इफ आई जस्ट क्विकली कंप्यूट इट वट विल आई गेट सो दिस वैल यू राइट वट इज एल्फा एल्फा इज इन आउट केस थर्टी आई थिंक या एल्फा इज थर्टी राइट सो कॉस ऑफ थर्टी प्लस थ्री इंटू हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाई टू इंटू पाई सो दिस इज सिक्सटी वन पॉइंट फाइव टू नाइन वोल्ड ओके सो दिस विल बी द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन आई व्यू एवरेज आस्ट टू कंप्लीट द एवरेज ऑफ अक्रॉस द आर विच विल बी फिफ्टी नाइन पॉइंट फाइव टू वोल्ड सो लाइक Here, right? This question took me time, and that is fine. But we have to derive everything, right? This was not something that, uh, like, we used to taught in our concept class in uh, elevators also, and like this won't be taught, right? Everything you can't teach every uh, every circuit, right? You have to understand how do you analyze by yourself. So that's why I focus on the analysis part more. So like, there is a important point for DC motor. Okay, you can go through this. Like, DC motor represents R R L load. Like inside, what is the application of inductor? and what happens okay and in case of dc load right so uh, dc load means what if the battery potential is not like this it is opposite okay this is a generator generator load right so this you will study in the machine chapter where the uh, polarity of e is different for generator and motor right as motor supplies energy sorry motor absorbs energy and generator supplies energy so that will be different so like what it is telling is for continuous conduction the trigger angle alpha is generally kept lower than 90 degree and the value of inductance is very high if the value of inductance is very high and the triggering angle is less than 90 degrees then only the uh, like uh, like there will be continuous conduction else else there won't be any continuous conduction i will explain this after solving this question i have summarized a few things okay and yeah all these things you know you can go through this okay let's solve this question there like this will be a very good good concept a full bridge converter this is a full bridge converter okay fine it is a like fully controlled supplying a r l load okay and do remember this e is flipped so this is a generator okay generator uh the firing angle of the bridge is 120 degrees so first time we have encountered a firing angle which is greater than 90 degrees so my alpha is 120 degrees the supply voltage vm is equals to 200 pi sin 100 pi t supply voltage vm is equals to 200 pi sin 100 pi t supply voltage is this r is this e is this all all of this is shown okay the inductor large is large enough to make the output current il smooth dc so very important information they have given us that il is smooth dc constant il is constant okay switches are lossless switches are actually lossless okay they don't have any loss the real power fed back to the source so they are telling us that the source is actually absorbing power right so the absorbing power and load is delivering why because load this time has a generator right that's why it will deliver that will understand okay now we have a full bridge rectifier and we don't have any bridge uh, sorry free wiring diode right so output voltage can either be this minus e when it is not uh, continuous or it will be something of the other, of the other either it will be plus vs or minus vs so output can have output right can have three three option it cannot be zero okay three options plus vs when this this t1 and t2 are on minus vs so if free wheeling diode is not present so obviously the third option is that uh, it cannot be equals to zero it can be either minus 800 right it can be minus 800 that is minus of e or i can write this minus 800 so this happens when my uh, load like i have discontinuous conduction right discontinuous load current is 
discontinuous and this will happen when my load current is continuous but what have they told they told me that the load current is constant if it is constant obviously it has to be continuous only it will be continuous only right so this option is gone this option is gone now what will happen how will the circuit work so we have analyzed the circuit so well that we know what will happen actually so t1 and t2 at the positive half cycle we will wait for the triggering angle alpha that is 120 degrees only after that they will be turned on else they will be in the forward blocking mode before that what will happen before that the current is continuous and uh, you are saying that this option is not possible so and this option is also not possible because t1 and t2 are waiting for the trigger so obviously t4 and t3 will be turned on even though they were supposed to be supposed to go in the reverse blocking mode but they will be turned on due to this l because this l is very high it will change its own voltage polarity to keep t3 and t4 on until what 2 pi by 3 when t1 and t2 on turns on and as soon as t1 and t2 turn on they will naturally commute at my t4 and t3 okay so that is what will happen so if I draw the waveform from 0 to from 0 to 120 degrees so I will wait for my T1 and T2 to turn on so if I wait obviously up until that time T3 and T4 will be on okay okay so it will be minus vs so vs itself is positive in this range it will be some minus vs right so minus vs will be something like this then at like it will also surpass 90 degrees so it will be something like minima like not minima it will pass the maximum value then just at omega t equals to 120 degrees t1 and t2 will be triggered as soon as t1 t2 is triggered it will be plus vs so this this point is what this is 2 pi by 3 equals to alpha and after that what will happen like uh, it, it will reduce 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 because i am after 2 pi by 3 sinusoid after 2 pi by 3 is reducing only it will come until the, uh, here what is this this is pi and after this pi rate what was supposed to happen the thing that was supposed to happen was that t1 and t2 must go in the reverse blocking mode but what will happen is that this inverter has high energy hence what will happen is that this will keep t1 and t2 on because t3 and t4 are in the forward blocking mode they are waiting for their triggers of pi plus 120 they are waiting for the triggers so they will not turn on so still my output voltage will be equals to plus vs and not minus vs so from after pi onwards right vs is negative so it will be same vs will go to negative Vs is Vs will go to negative and again it will, it will reach some peak value okay I can just copy this only right why am I taking it so much just copy this again after what like this plus pi if this is plus pi is 5 pi by 3 okay next what is happening again it will be equals to minus vs and minus vs after 5 pi by 3 is something plus so that's why this will flip and this will become plus vs and this will follow right this will just follow this will just simply follow so basically what is happening my vo is equals to vs from alpha omega equals to alpha t to omega t equals to pi plus alpha right because it has to conduct till pi because next pi the t3 and t4 will conduct so vs will this will be equals to minus vs from omega t equals to I, uh, alpha plus pi to 2 pi plus alpha like this will follow and like this is what this is just a periodic waveform with period what pi periodic waveform with period pi okay so i can simply compute the 
uh, values for this average value what will be view average view average right for a uh, like converter without free wheeling doubt continuous converter it is 2 vm upon pi cos alpha i can derive as well so let's um, derive so this is alpha right this is alpha so from 0 to alpha like you can do like this also from alpha to pi plus alpha what is from alpha to pi plus alpha i am equals to plus vs right this is pi plus alpha so i'll just do that from like it is 2 vm by uh, pi cos alpha you can directly directly write but i will still derive so my period is 1 by pi and from alpha to pi plus alpha what is the case it is plus vs that is vm sin omega t d omega t okay so this is pi so what will be this what will be this so this will be minus cos omega t and so this will be minus cos omega so cos alpha minus of cos pi plus alpha and this is actually cos pi plus alpha is actually minus of cos alpha so this will be and vm is obviously outside 2 vm by pi cos alpha okay like you can remember or always you can derive so what is like uh, vm vm is i believe vm is 200 or 100 okay yeah, 200 pi right so this will be 200 pi so pi pi will get cancelled this will be 200 only and cos 120 right cos 120 is minus of half you can use the gate calculator as well so it will be minus 200 so this is very important right? it is minus 200 so why is it coming negative what is the significance of upper voltage negative that also i'll tell but you can understand from the graph as well like i have more negative area than positive area so what is io average what is io average will io average also come negative io average can never come negative io average is vo average minus e this time right it will not be minus e this will be actually plus e why because the polarity is half flipped now that's why this will be plus e by r so vo average is minus 200 plus e e is what e is uh 800 i think yeah 800 r is what r is 20 r is 20 okay sorry sorry for that okay so this will be simply 30 amperes io average is th simply 30 amperes and it is positive okay so it makes sense right it is positive because io average can never be negative view average can be negative okay but io average has to be like this because current can only flow like this direction it can never flow like this direction right it is impossible so this is my io average now what have they asked they, ask, they have asked how much power real power is fed back so basically right one important thing to note here is that who is feeding this power who is feeding this power this power is being fed back by the generator so this is this is a generator right this is generator and as the polarities are flipped what is happening current is flowing in this direction so current is leaving from the positive terminal of this battery right so hence it is delivering power and who is actually receiving the power overall in a cycle inator doesn't take any power okay raise register does dissipate power and this is leaving right so this battery is actually giving power to the source and to the register okay so like there are two ways to do this do this this is the first one that the generator right is providing power to the register plus the source the inductor power is zero over a cycle so what is p generator it is a dc battery right so i have to multiply dc current with it why i have explained previously as well e into io average equals to p into r rpr is what sorry equals to pr pr is io rms whole square into r plus ps okay what is ps ps is the supply the power absorbed by the supply that i don't know that is the unknown thing right so what i can do is 
वट इज माई पी जेनरेटर इट इज यू इंटू एवरेज ई इज एटी इंटू आई यू एवरेज इज थर्टी इक्वल्स टू थर्टी बिकॉज लोड करेंट इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो आई यू एवरेज फुल बिकॉज टू आई यू आर एम एस इंटू आर वॉज आई थिंक ट्वेंटी ओके प्लस पी एस सो आई कैन सब ट्रैक दिस वॉट वुल आई गेट सो दिस विल बी ओके एट हंड्रेड माइनस सिक्स हंड्रेड इंटू थर्टी इक्वल्स टू पी एस सो दिस लाइक दे हैव आस्ट अस इन किलो वर्ड्स सो पी एस विल बी कॉज सिंपली लाइक दिस विल बी टू हंड्रेड इंटू थर्टी दिस विल बी सिक्स किलो वर्ड्स ओके तो आंसर आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन विल बी सिक्स किलो वर्ड्स दैट विल दैट विल आंसर नाउ वट इज द मेथड टू मेथड मेथड टू इज इवन सिंपलर दैन दिस लाइक दिस राइट वट वट इज द पावर फेड टू द लोड दिस होल लोड दिस इज वी आर एवरेज टू आई एवरेज सो पावर सप्लाइड टू द लोड फ्रॉम सोर्स वी एवरेज इंटू एवरेज ओनली वैलिड लाइक आई हैव मैंशन दिस मेनी टाइम्स बिफोर ओनली वैलिड फॉर एज लोड करेंट इज कॉन्स्टेंट लोड करेंट इज कॉन्स्टेंट so if i compute this vo average into i average what do i get so ps is equals to vo average into i u average vo average is how much it is it was something uh, minus 200 minus 200 into i u average is what 30 so it comes out to be minus 6 kilowatts now what does this negative sign specify so previously we used to compute the sub supply power right it was positive as it is negative that means my source is absorbing power source is absorbing power if i have a negative sign in front so total oh, net net my source is absorbing 6 kilowatts of power so 6 kilowatt will be my answer okay and you can cross verify okay sorry again You can cross verify that see I was getting six kilowatt here and I am getting six kilowatt here again. So whatever you have solved is correct. So like this also you can solve. Okay. So like this is a bit of summary about uh, full wave rectifier and without free wheeling doubt and uh, like this is like it doesn't matter for free wheeling or uh, normal. So this continuous conduction will happen in simple R and RE loads due to Done no inductive action, right? I don't have any inductance, so they won't be able to turn on the high resistors even when they were in they are in the reverse blocking mode. But I I can get continuous or discontinuous conduction on the R L R L and R L load depending on the load conditions, depending on the value of the inductors. So this is the two case that you need to keep in mind. So whenever try you try to solve the questions, right? Try to understand what is the output voltage waveform. From the output voltage waveform, you will be able to solve everything for a rectifier question. Next important conclusion. is for different cases right so you have have a purely inductive load and if my con, uh, like alpha if my alpha angle is less than 90 degrees i will get continuous conduction but it will be unstable unstable right because current will keep on increasing and it will be unstable we have derived for this if my alpha is greater than equals to 90 or exactly equals to 90 it is on the edge of continuity and discontinuity is stable and if my alpha is greater than 90 then also it will be stable what will happen is that i will get a discontinuous conduction uh, conduction why because from alpha to pi the current will increase to a peak value it increase then for what duration did it charge pi minus alpha then same pi minus alpha it will discharge which will be 2 pi minus alpha and from again 2 pi minus alpha to 2 pi alpha duration this will not do anything okay current will be zero voltage will also be zero so there will be discontinuous conduction for sure if my alpha is greater than 90 degrees okay we have derived that, that this as well in our analysis part this with pure inductor now if i have a rl load for a rl load right so if my even if my alpha is less than equals to 90 degrees i can get continuous or discontinuous conduction but it depends why does it depend because in the analysis part i also explain that 
it was charging through this supply right so the through this source the okay, cat rnl now inductor has to discharge not only through the source it has to discharge through the register as well right there is a register as well so obviously discharging time will be less because it will discharge more in lower amount of time because i have a register that is also consuming some energy okay previously the source was charging energizing the inductor but now this inductor is energizing source and both resistors so that, that is a pain for me so obviously if alpha is less than 90 right i won't be able to surely say what will happen to the con con conduction of the current right conduction of the current so it depends on the load if my inductor is very very large if my inductor is very very large then my load can be continuous or discontinuous load can be continuous or discontinuous okay now if my alpha is greater than 90 then then i can guarantee then i, can, I will be able to say in guaranteed manner that this will be discontinuous why because the charging time will be what here the charging time will be something more than 90 degrees okay so it will reach peak at 180 then again it will decrease but here the charging time is even less than 90 degrees so obviously after it reaches 98 when the input reaches um, yeah when the input reaches 180 okay after that what is happening the supply is going to negative and inductor will discharge so it doesn't even have enough like it doesn't didn't even charge enough to at least sustain the period even there is an r so obviously it will discharge more so that's why i can say for guarantee that for alpha greater than 90 there will be discontinuous conduction now again for r le load same conditions right this time inductor actually will give energy to the battery as well as r to the battery as well as r right that's why so this is for a motor this case is for a motor okay and what about this case okay if my alpha is less than 90 degrees continuous or discontinuous conduction then what can i say what can i say i can say that uh, i can say that if my alpha is less than 98 and i have a generator now this is not a motor this is a generator so what is happening is that after like before this 90 right this actually inductor is not actually charging it is actually discharging okay why because the generator actually is like uh, taking energy okay the it case is inverse just like you saw the example here right you saw the example in this in this example what is happening so here right current was flowing like this okay current was flowing like this who was supplying that energy this e right this e was supplying the energy now even if this is plus okay here i have e right so this e is very very large so overall voltage across the inductor will be something negative okay so hence like during the positive half cycle this was actually discharging this was actually discharging here from here also you can observe that what is the ps ps is basically vs times is okay and what is the is now is is flowing through here right t3 t4 so in this region my t3 and t4 are on t3 and t4 are on in this region okay so if my t3 and t4 are on if my t3 and t4 are on what can i say io is equals uh, is equals to minus is right so this is is negative but this voltage is positive so obviously it is energizing right who is giving energy this inductor and e okay then after after the triggering it after the triggering what is happening is that this is becomes positive and io also becomes positive because this e was providing energy to this and this l as well previously here but after this right what will happen inductor will discharge okay so like this is the reason you can check with the results that for continuous conduction the um, condition for generator will just be the opposite of that of the motor okay this one also we will understand a bit more in machines part as well okay so don't need to take too much headache about this just understand these four key concepts these key concepts are good okay good to understand conceptually what is happening okay so if my alpha is okay there here i have done a mistake my alpha needs to be okay this was a mistake actually alpha needs to be greater than this and alpha needs to be less than this so if my alpha is less than this uh, less than 90 degrees right less than 90 de degrees then only you can surely say that I will have discontinuous conduction sorry for that uh, mistake basically that was a mistake on my behalf that alpha needs to be less than 90 degrees okay so yeah 
and if alpha is greater than 90 degrees, so we get continuous and discontinuous conduction. Okay, so these are a few things. And let's move on to the next question. So next question is again pretty simple. We have a half controlled single phase bridge rectifier so supplying an RL load, right? Supplying an RL load. We, it is a half controlled rectifier, half controlled rectifier, right? It is operated at a firing, firing angle of alpha and the load current is continuous. They have told me load current is continuous. The fraction of the cycle that the free willing diode conducts. So I have a free willing diode, right? So when will the free willing diode conduct? They have told me that the load current is continuous. So if load current is continuous and I have a half controlled semi converter, okay, full way rectifier. So from zero to alpha, right? From zero to alpha, I will, my bridge will wait for the triggering, my thyristors T1 and T2 will wait for the triggering angle alpha, alpha, right? Triggering, uh, sorry, triggering signal, okay, from zero to alpha. So they will be off and I have a free willing diode, right? So as soon, like as soon as they are waiting, they will be off and my T3 and T4 has gone to the reverse blocking mode and my inductor won't keep them on because I have a I have a free willing diode now. So inductor will keep the free willing diode on. So if whenever the free willing diode is on, the voltage across the load is zero. Then again, suddenly at omega t equals to alpha, my free, if, uh, like free willing diode turns off, the T1 and T2 SCRs are triggered. As soon as the T1 and T2 SCRs are triggered, V will be equals to minus Vs. Then again, at pi, right? T1 and T2, natural computation will happen. Basically, the voltage will go to negative and they will be in the reverse blocking mode. So as soon as they are in the reverse blocking mode, what will happen? T3 and T4 are waiting for the pulse, gate pulse, and T1 and T2 are off. So from pi to pi plus alpha, what I can say? Basically, it will be zero again. The free willing diode will be on. And after pi plus alpha, like, again, T3 and T4 will be on and it will be equals to minus minus vs okay minus vs so what will be uh what will be what have they asked they, they have asked me the fraction of cycle that the free willing diode conducts so what is the cycle cycle is a period of pi overall i have a pi period and the fraction of cycle for which the free willing diode conducts is alpha right so it will be alpha by pi okay so this is the portion where my free willing diode conducts and this is the portion where my thyristors conducts T1, T2 in this case, T3, T4, and what is this? Free willing doubt, right? This is free willing doubt. Okay. So answer will be alpha by pi, which is which is given in the option D. So option D will be correct. Okay. Option D will be correct. Next, what is happening? The circuit diagram, the circuit diagram of an AC to DC one pulse converter with free willing diode as shown in the figure. Okay, it has been shown as free willing diode uh, and a circuit diagram of an AC to DC converter. This is a half a rectifier. This is this is what this is switch module, right? I have a IGBT with a down diode here. So if you haven't studied switch module well, you will not be able to solve this. The IGBT is triggered at 2.5 milliseconds. So it can only be triggered in the forward blocking re region. It doesn't have any re reverse blocking. That's why this D1 is in series. It cannot block reverse voltage. So average load voltage is 230 volts. Which of the statements is slash R correct? So average voltage is 230 volts. All the information is given over here. The load will be continuous. Load will be in continuous conduction mode. Peak inverse voltage of the diode D1 can be Vm plus E. Maximum voltage blocked by the IGBT will be less than Vm. Average voltage of the inductor is 0 volts. Okay. So here, this is the MSQ first of all. This is MSQ. What can I say about this question, right? So let's go part by part. So lo load will be in continuous conduction mode. How do I identify load will be in continuous conduction mode? After, by ident identifying VO, right? VO. So if they have told me, I will assume. Assume load to be. in continuous conduction mode okay mm. 
ओके अज्यूम लोड टू बी इन द कंटिन्यूस कंडक्शन मोड इफ एज्यूम इट टू बी इन द कंटिन्यूस कंडक्शन मोड देन इफ माई वोट इज इफ माई लाइक दिस इज हाफ अर एक्टिव राइट हाउ कैन दिस मीन कंटिन्यूस कंडक्शन मोड फ्रॉम एल्फा टू पाई दिस डिवाइस विल बी ऑन राइट दिस विल बी ट्रिकेट सो दिस डिवाइस विल बी ऑन बिकॉज दिस वॉज इन द फॉर ब्लॉकिंग मोड फ्रॉम जीरो टू पाई फ्रॉम जीरो टू पाई ओके and from pi to pi what will happen this will discharge my inductor will discharge through this free willing diode because this will be on this is a half rectifier so from pi to pi only way current can flow is through this d2 diode not through this d1 diode okay so the waveform will look something like this upper voltage waveform from 0 to alpha i will wait for my trigger so after that it will be equals to plus vs then from alpha to pi this will be z, uh, like uh, plus base and from after pi one onwards this will be simply zero right to pi this will be zero okay this is my vo okay so what can i say what can i say is that uh, here right what will happen is that Uh, alpha to pi this this to pi. What will be the average output voltage if I assume like continuous conduction? What will be the average output voltage? Voltage V average will be one by two pi. This will be what? One plus cos alpha right? V M one plus cos alpha. You can derive obviously any time integration from alpha to pi V M sine omega t. Okay, and you will get as one plus cos alpha. So what is one plus cos alpha? Cos alpha is what? Cos alpha is here yeah, this is 2.5 milliseconds so like what do i know that 20 ms in time period is known as 2 pi total time period for a sinusoid okay if my total time period is 20 milliseconds for a 50 hertz signal so 2.5 will be what i have to divide this by what divide this by 8 i have to divide this by 8 so it will be it will be pi by 4 basically so like that you can understand or you can directly compute Yeah, simple omega t equals to uh, theta, and like that from theta they they will really understand omega equals to two pi f or two pi by capital T. So like that you can do and um, yeah. So it will be V M V M is what V M is two thirty root two. Divide by two pi into one point seven zero seven because cos pi by four is one point seven zero point seven zero seven. I am adding one with it, so it, so it will be one point seven zero seven. One point seven zero seven into two thirty into under two divide by two divide by pi. This will be equals to eighty eight. Point three seven volts. Okay, but what have they told me? They have told me my VO average is actually two thirty volts. So mo so my so my VO average actual is actually greater than VO average if I assume it to be continuous. So where am I going wrong here? So if I have to increase my view average, right? What can I do? I cannot obviously, like, uh, okay, I can increase like these values, right? I cannot increase this value because view for sure will be equal to plus vs from alpha to pi. But for other values, I can increase. So what will happen is that if I increase here and here, the area will increase. Hence, the average value will also increase. So what happens if I increase the area? So this value needs to be equal to what? This value needs to be equal to e, right? E. I don't care what the E value is, but this value needs to be equal to E. And whenever my output voltage is equal to E, that means what? That means my load is discontinuous. So first option, right? Load is in continuous conduction mode is wrong. Okay, this is wrong. So load is discontinuous. So from here I can say load is Discontinuous. The load is discontinuous. What about the next thing? Peak inverse voltage of diodes D1 can be Vm plus E. Okay, 
peak inverse voltage of diode zone can be vm plus e so here d1 right so my this diode whenever this is on whenever this is on i can measure this voltage as i will take this circuit So this is VIGPT, right? VIGPT. So IGPT can only block forward voltage. It can never block reverse voltage. Okay. So and during the free wheeling action, okay, during the free wheeling action, this diode D two will be on. Then what will be the voltage across this? So the voltage across this will be what? So if I apply a K wheel, right? If I apply K wheel. So what will happen is this can block forward voltage if let's say but this is minus Vm right this let's say I am providing it a minus Vm okay so what will happen is this this will not block any reverse voltage right? this will not block any reverse voltage reverse voltage will all, all, only be blocked by d1 so if you couldn't understand please go and watch my composite switches lecture so obviously the diode d1 right what voltage it has to block so here if let's say at this point when this d2 is on this has to block only plus vm and if this D2 is even off, right? Everything is off. It is discontinuous conduction. Okay. It is discontinuous conduction. Then like no current is flowing, right? Through this diode, this is reverse bias. So there will be no current. Like this is zero amps of current. So this will also be zero amps of current. So at this node, right? At this node, what potential I have? At this node, I have potential of E. And this cannot block any negative voltage, right? This cannot block any negative voltage. So if, if I apply KVL, so this will be plus VM. So voltage across the diode is like this plus minus VD1 plus zero because IGBT can block zero voltage plus VD1 plus like I can go through here as well so this all this will be zero zero current and zero voltage this will be plus E equals to zero so my VD1 right VD1 at peak can go to minus VM minus E so what is the peak inverse voltage peak inverse voltage will be peak inverse voltage of D1 will be vm plus e okay this will be the peak inverse peak inverse voltage of v1 now what about c what about the c option so b option is correct actually they have told us correct that yeah peak inverse voltage of d1 can be vm plus e which is correct maximum voltage blocked by the igvt will be less than vm why is that the case so in which polarity my igvt can block the voltage my igvt can block the voltage in positive direction okay so here this will be plus minus vm now because if it is plus minus vm right all the voltage will be blocked by this igbt none of the voltage will be blocked by this diode because this diode will be in forward bias right this cannot block any positive voltage so this will become simply zero right simply short circuit now again if i apply some kva right and if i assume okay fine even though this is short circuit right this is this is this is in the forward blocking region so i cannot pass any current and this this is also off okay this is also off so what what will be the voltage so my vigbt if, if i apply kvl like this will be vm minus e okay and let's say if this diode is on during the forward uh, blocking mode right this diode is on let's say then what will be my blocked potential what will be a block potential my block potential will be what this will be minus vm minus vm plus vigbt plus zero equals to zero so my V I G B T can be equal to V M, but, but what is the, uh, like, uh, assumption that we took is load is not continuous. 
so as load is not continuous right this will not be on during its forward blocking region okay this will not be on during its forward blocking region it will turn off but i cannot conclusively say because uh i don't know all the parameters right i don't know inductor and they haven't they haven't told us the extension angle so but load is discontinuous hence what i can say i can say that my this condition d d2 right will be off actually i cannot say for sure so obviously i will not mark this okay because i am no nothing conclusive can be said right nothing conclusive it can be because of vm as well nothing conclusive i need the extension angle need extension angle and last point last point is average voltage of the inductor is zero which is correct right this is always true because it is a stable circuit and hence according to the volt second criteria average voltage across the inductor will always be zero okay so this is the case basically this is the case and uh, like basically right okay one thing is for sure during the forward blocking region only from zero to alpha from zero to alpha this will block some voltage as this will not block any voltage right? this will not block any voltage so yeah all all of that is fine and this is this is blocking when like this part b right this part b is blocking when okay not this the c part the b part i am talking this b part when i am between pi to 2 pi so this is only when i am talking about the b part right so this was the question let's go to the next question so this is the last question basically which of the following is not an advantage of full wave rectifiers full wave rectifiers offer high rectification efficiency compared to half wave rectifiers this is true okay because they offer high rectification efficiency because they are operating in two half cycles not only single so this is true but they are asking us not the output current the output voltage of a standard app full wave rectifier has lower ripple compared to half wave rectifier which is again true right if, even if even if it is uh, standard app transformer full wave rectifier it is still full wave rectifier so full wave rectifier will always have less ripples than half wave rectifier because it is on for more period of time the average value voltage is also increasing and it has less ripples they experience lower power loss because no voltage signal is wasted during the rectification process is this true we'll come to this later the standard app transformer is more costly and takes up more space than a half wave rectifier this this is again true right this is again true uh, about full wave rectifiers now this they experience lower power loss because no voltage signal is wasted during the rectification process this, this is not true right why this is not true because they experience they experience more power loss because i have more power more devices more scrs more loss so even though even though like my rectification efficiency has improved why because the uh, like power has improved it by itself but obviously the switching losses will be more it will not be less because i have more devices now more switches so obviously there will be twice the switching losses not uh, like quad the switching losses previously i had only one switch now i have four switch if i am considering the bridge rectifier okay so that is it for this lecture so this lecture was mainly filled with question and the, in the starting i taught you about the semiconductors so in the next lecture we'll start a new topic about source inductance and few other things so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you in the next lecture